What is going on everybody? So I am back today to talk about another film that was nominated for an Academy Award. I've been trying to watch as many Academy Award nominees from the different categories as I possibly can so that I can rank them all once it gets a little closer to Oscar Day. And this was a film that actually kind of surprised me because when I see a director's name like Sam Mendes, who has been so prolific and so many people love his films, The Reception of 1917, when he releases a movie, I expect a ton of buzz around it. A lot of talk about this one, and I feel like this one was kind of swept under the rug. Barely anyone talked about it. There was a few people, including my friend Nate, who mentioned this movie to me more than once to check out. And I'm always really surprised when there's someone who's very prolific that releases a movie and it's not talked about much. Similarly to the Inurito movie that was released last year, Bardo, which I feel like no one talked about either, which is really strange. Uh, so I wanted to check this one out and give it my own opinion. And the movie I'm gonna be discussing today is Empire of Light. Empire of Light is directed by Sam Mendes, a love story set in and around an old cinema on the south coast of England in the 1980s. So as simplistic of a description that Letterboxd gave for that film, that's about the movie, um, as funny as it is. It, it's not that simplistic, there's more to the film. And honestly, because there is more to the film, I feel like that's why this movie didn't do so hot and wasn't critically well received because this movie is okay. I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people are saying. There's some people acting like this is one of the worst films ever released and I don't think it's that bad. But I also don't think there's really anything special to it. It's very run of the mill, very formulaic, but it also tries to juggle way too many concepts that it can't, Sam Mendes can't seem to handle everything he wants to tackle. And I'll get into it a little bit more with the review. So Empire of Light starts Olivia Coleman as Hillary, who works at a movie theater with all of these young kids. The movie theater is ran by Colin Firth's character. He is having an affair with Olivia Coleman. She doesn't seem to really want to be a part of it. It's almost like she's doing it to appease her boss and she's afraid that she might lose her job if she doesn't do that. And so she's working at the theater while at the same time we see her seeing a psychiatrist. She's clearly having issues in her own life. And one day this new young man, Stephen, who is black, comes to work at this theater that is predominantly white. It seems like most of the community that they're in in England is predominantly white. And this is a time period in England where racial tension were very high and so he starts working there and him and Olivia Coleman start to form this unlikely relationship while they work at this movie theater together so on the surface I really do like the characters to this movie I think that they're uh, charming they're really easy to watch and especially when they're introduced at the beginning of the of the film I think Olivia Coleman really is the standout performance in this movie she's incredible at everything that she does it never ceases to amaze me just how incredible of an actress that she is even in material that isn't my favorite I always really love her and whatever she's in and she's really captivating and she's really dedicated to this material obviously you look at a powerhouse like Colin Firth he's very good in this Toby Jones is great the young Michael Ward that's in this is really fantastic all their performances are good. The problem is this movie is trying to juggle so many themes to where none of them feel like they're explored long enough to be incredibly powerful and they don't really get very much of a resolve. So on one hand you have this film looking at the power dynamics and feminism as a whole. If you look at Olivia Coleman's character she's forced into this sexual relationship with her boss where you can tell she's really not interested in it but she's afraid she's going to lose her job if she doesn't engage. He's very manipulative in a way that you can see really early on. So you have this whole idea of feminism. There's a couple of uh, conversations that Olivia Coleman has throughout the film that brings that up. Then you have the conversation of mental health where her character is going through this psychological decline. There's something that happened in her past that she's trying to deal with while also going through day-to-day -day life and the mundanity of existence. And so you're trying to look at her psyche and her mental health. Then you have Stephen who comes there and he's a young black man living in England at this time where racial tensions are incredibly high. So they try to introduce all of these little conflicts 
along the way to show the racial tensions and to try to build that up as another plot arc that needs to overcome. And then the movie is also trying to talk about the love of cinema and the love of film. And so you have all of these things that are being juggled and jumped back and forth, back and forth, to where it never fixates on one thing long enough for you to really care, which is unfortunate. Hillary's character starts to form a relationship with Steven, and you start to really want to follow that and see where it goes, but then it jumps to the theater running this premiere and getting back into the relationship between Hillary and uh, Colin Firth's character and then you jump into her mental health issues and then you jump into the feminism dynamic and then you jump to all these other characters and it is just so all over the place it is impossible to stay invested with each one of these stories because you're being pulled left and right and all over the place and after about the first hour I was so detached from the material that I just couldn't get back into it it never even when it tied up at the end I didn't really feel anything emotionally because I had been pulled all over the place. There's also some scenes in this where the dialogue is really bad. It felt very juvenile. It felt like it was written by a child at moments where it was just so corny and ham-fisted. Especially a lot of the stuff about the love of cinema element. The scene where Toby Jones is describing the projector in the movie theater and like how it runs at 24 frames per second was one of the most laughable scenes I've seen in a movie all year long. It felt like something that a freshman in film school at college would have wrote into their movie. It's just like so Oscar Beatty and so like oh my god here we go again. Like you look at a film released last year like The Fablemans that is an incredible beautiful love letter to cinema and this film decided it wanted to be that for about a quarter of the movie and there is a scene where Olivia Coleman is watching the film being there which is a, per a personal favorite of mine and she's getting really emotional and I thought that was a very beautiful scene but all the other elements surrounding that are never fully explored enough for this to be a love letter to film because you're also so focused on those other issues that are in the movie there's a couple scenes with racial tension that are thrown in there like there's a scene with this guy eating his french fries in the theater where Steven's character tells him he's not allowed to bring him in and it's just so sloppily put together he gets bullied by these people outside where it just feels kind of thrown in as like a here's another thing we want to talk about in the movie but like just make that the central focus of the movie like don't try to tackle so many things if you're not going to take the time and energy to flesh every single one of those elements out even with Hillary's character I never felt completely and totally compelled to care about her because you're not diving into her life enough to really know or understand why she is the way that she is because we're so focused on these other elements that Sam Mendes wants to explore and so that's really what took me out of it it's just so much going on at one time that it never really resolves in a way that feels satisfying and I did think the cinematography was incredible Roger Deakins is amazing I mean anything that he does is gonna look great I think the Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross score is really beautiful it's not the best material that they've ever done but it does accompany this source material really well and it goes to show that you can throw those guys on whatever project you want and that they're gonna put out something of quality and yeah I'm not like upset that I watched this but I also don't know if I'd ever revisit it again because I don't think that there's enough that I can hold on to to really care all that much so have you seen Empire of Light did you love it did you hate it leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought I thought this movie was average I don't think that there's anything super special to it aside from Olivia Coleman's performance but you can always watch it and develop your own opinion and let me know what you think as always if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for I'm always putting out new material and look forward to getting more out for you in the near future and as always everyone thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day